viewers, friends from Hono Home and Abroad. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, everybody. By the grace of Almighty, Almighty Creator, Almighty Allah, today again we are with our panel discussion, honorable guest speakers from India, different parts of India, and from USA. Uh, they are development activists. They are doing fantastic job in different different fields. So, through this community chat talks, YouTube community talks, BD Facebook page, we are hosting this. Myself Habib Rahman, on behalf of me, I wholeheartedly welcome you to join with us and enjoy the session. Of course, you must put your comments and then in the end you you could see. Please share your uh, uh, friends network so that they could be connected and just join with us and today's uh, topic is uh, impact of COVID-19 among children, role of families and communities. We are very happy to invite our four guests together today. So uh, let us introduce with our honorable guest in the panel today. Hello. Hello. All right, dear viewers, dear friends, you could see our panel discussion, our honorable guests and speakers today's session on impact of COVID-19 among children, rural of families and community. Four guests are already in. So let me introduce them. Uh, you, you can see that uh, from the bottom, I, uh, they will, of course, speak out on their own career, on their on their own areas. But just let me say about them a little bit. Uh, Mr. Manas Kumar Sharkar from West Bengal, Kolkata. He is a lead consultant. He is doing so many works on different, different fields, uh, having a uh, long years. So, of course, he will talk. Uh, Mr. Manas Kumar Sharkar. Welcome to this episode today on a uh, special issue on child, right? And Dr. Rama Kumar, she is a psychiatrist, she is a psychologist, she is a specialist on child issues, child and adolescents. She has so many other designations. I will just include step by step uh, uh, the passes of time. We could see Shatirupa Mujumdar from West Bengal. She is a functionary in the field, she's doing work in uh, uh, in children during this, especially this COVID time uh, in uh, Shundarban area. So we are very glad to have you here, Ms. Shatarupa Muzumdar. Welcome to this show. Ms. Shatarupa, could you hear me? Could you yes, hear me? Yes, yes, I can because your voice was dropping. Yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. All right. Thank you. And Debra, Debra Afremson, nickname Anima. Actually, uh, she is currently in Bangladesh from USA. She is executive director of Institute of Wellbeing, Bangladesh. She is country regional director of HealthBridge Canada. She is founding advisor and chief advisor of, of WBB Trust, Work for a Better Bangladesh Trust. This is a fantastic development organization, two development organizations in Bangladesh. So let us actually come together and do our hands together to what we can do really for the children and current scenario. And before going on uh, the discussion, of course, I must request Mr. Manas Kumar Shakar, uh, having just three minutes time initially, just to have and uh, give some ideas from India, Indian perspective, how COVID is going on there and uh, gi giving us some points, how we can go on the discussion on child issue today. Mr. Manus Kumar Sharkar. And my request is other speakers, please keep your microphone mute, please. So that we can... Uh... Manus Kumar Sharkar, please go on.
Uh, actually, we, we, ca we cannot hear you. Please, yeah, please un unmute your microphone. Yeah, yeah, we cannot hear you. Should it? Okay, okay. I'm not sure actually, I want, I'm wondering, others can hear you? Dr. Roma, could you hear? No, no. So just headphone plug in and out again, then it, it would be okay, so for I think, Mr. Monashoka. And no worry, you just fix it again. Let me come to uh, Ms. Shatrupa Mojumdar, actually. Could you give us some views from India, uh, Ms. Shatrupa Mojumdar, how could you share us? your ideas during this COVID time from yeah. India, West Bengal. Yes, yes. Um, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, we are working in Sundarbans, which is uh, very remote. And it has been a lot of news recently for the Amphan. And uh, so when uh, this COVID-19 lockdown started in India, particularly in West Bengal. So we run a school, the only English medium school in Sundarbans, and we have various activities with the children. So the it was on the 16th of March. From the 16th of March, the government announced uh, all the schools to shut down. So initially, we thought it was uh, just for probably 10 days or 15 days or 20 days. So the children were asked not to come to school. And but from April, when we realized that the lockdown was for a longer time, so we did an assessment of um, how children are doing at home and uh, what they are doing, whether they are enjoying at home or they want to come back to school. So we did a assessment with the parents and spoke to them and the teachers uh, spoke to the with the parents over phone and uh, whoever, wherever they were possibly be able to be in touch with them. And when the, where the teachers were not in touch with them because of, there was no communication process, they would visit them and just have a talk from uh, distance, of course, maintaining the social distance, etc. That uh, how the children are doing and what is that they want to want, how the, the school to function. So about on the first week of uh, April, from the 5th of April, we designed and formulated the way that the school could carry on and the teachers could carry on their classes. And so the children could have the interaction because uh, there are types of vulnerabilities which we identified during this period of lockdown. Number one, there was an emotional stress in the children because the children were away from school for a long time. They were locked up at homes. They could not go out of the home, could not play, which is uh, which is a very phenomenal feature, particularly in rural sites of any of our country sites where children, they go out in the field or they go out with their friends and they play, which they were unable to do. They were mostly constrained and inside the houses and uh, Naturally, the parents were also uh, more uh, taking uh, taking into things uh, seriously that uh, which they keep on doing with the children that you cannot do this, you cannot do that, which which is also a little bit of mental stress for the children. So we our entire uh, process was that how we could involve the parents into the system so that the parents could enjoy. Uh, I mean, uh, not enjoy, but rather feel relaxed during this period of lockdown. They don't feel suffocated and uh, even the the community as a whole how the uh, teachers could involve the community in the process and the children could feel relaxed and little contented so we started the classes and um, we use the online platforms for classes and then youtube links and channels where the teachers could upload various kind of videos although it is in a very uh, remote area and accessibility is definitely a very big challenge, but yet we were very successful in doing it. So this one thing we can say that when the determination and the conviction is very strong, probably a lot of things can be sorted out. And uh, the teachers were taking regular classes, which was more of activity classes rather than doing 
any kind of rote learning so that the children don't get bored as it is they were bored being at home to get more bored with the teacher i mean with a kind of the process of teaching the teaching learning process so we were constantly on various research programs to find out various activity based teachings for all standards from nursery to higher classes so that they can enjoy the classes and then when they were all together the friends five six of them together in one uh, particular video they would enjoy to see their friends their faces and smile at each other so a lot of uh, uh, i mean a uh, uh, environment of uh, security and happiness could be generated and as far as uh, parents are concerned uh, we could actually involve the fathers into the process which is a bit rare and the children don't get that much of access access with the fathers because they tend to be very busy during the other days so uh, the fathers were involved in doing craft with the children in doing uh, practicing making them practice handwriting we have a large number of parents who are not from a i mean children are first generation learners very good but you know activities which will uh, which will uh, help the family to sit together and do it we try to do, do those kind of activities so Very on good. the whole we were trying to bring down the vulnerabilities in such a way that both the parents as well as the child do not feel the suffocation of this lockdown because we were at a certain point we could realize that the lockdown was for an indefinite period not knowing till when we can when till when it is going to go on so that was our entire process of bringing the community uh, into a better position in the sense feeling a little more relaxed at their own situations so that is how we have tried to do uh, certain vulnerabilities uh, remained uh, in spite of everything is that there was a uh, since the source of economic uh, contribution the family was reducing uh, fathers who are daily wage earners they all could right, not go right. out uh, so yeah yeah Shatrupa so Majumdar in a nutshell, will, uh, I, I'm coming here, right? Yeah, yeah. Very, 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 very good delivery. Actually, we'll come again to you on that specific field that I was doing. So let let me come to uh, Mr. Manos uh, Sharkar. Mr. Manos Kumar Sharkar, could you hear me? Your microphone is off. Could you please unmute your microphone? Mr. Monos Kumar Sharkar, could you hear me? Uh, he hello, hello, could you hear me? Increase, increase your volume. Just off, log off or log in again. No worry, no worry. Don't be puzzled. We are, we are in. So no worry. Can uh, can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Am I audible? Okay. Am I audible now? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Mr. Manus Kumar Shaka. See, from uh, your part, we 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 need an introduction for three minutes. <laughs> Right. The uh, the thing last uh, during last two and a half months, I have been working closely with several organizations who are working with children and adolescents because not, children here I consider from zero to eighteen, who uh, as per the UNCRC we consider as children. So it's not, all children are into uh, in different age groups. They have different levels of uh, vulnerabilities and different kind of uh, situation they are facing like who are the younger ones they are facing vulnerabilities in terms of not having appropriate infrastructure and services uh, in access to their routine immunization that is uh, one of the things that is missing and that is also creating a tension among the parents that they cannot uh, uh, go to the hospitals because most of the hospitals are now being marked as a covid hospital so these services are uh, closed for the time being that is one of the vulnerabilities that is taking place. Second is those children who are into the early childhood education. They are missing the ICDS program, the early childhood education program, 
which is um, a very uh, common program across India and those uh, Anganwadi centers are closed down. You can understand the millions of children are missing the services and they are at home. Parents do not know what to do with the children and what will happen to them. Similarly, children in the schools, the schools are closed as Shadruga mentioned, schools are closed from uh, end of March. So there is no class, no connection with the teachers, no communication from the uh, school teachers, only once in a month the schools are providing the midday meal. That is also on a but parents are mostly coming to collect. Not even the children are allowed to come to the school to collect them. So that is the situation where children are facing a lot of difficulties because they are not uh, accustomed with this kind of situation, not even the parents. So there's a lot of uh, things happening that parents are getting into difficult circumstances because some of the parents have lost their uh, livelihood also. Those who are basically the um, the daily wage earners or those who are into some small factories they have lost their uh, livelihood so that is also a crisis that has happened in in several families where these families are striving to survive and at that circumstances that is become that has become a hello hello yeah. All right, you are all right. Okay, no so, so the schools are closed. So there are a lot of uh, problems happening with uh, those children into schools. And apart from those who are in the adolescent age group, they are the most uh, um, sufferers actually, because they have adjustment problems at home. They have adjustment problems with their parents. They are not able to meet with their peer groups. They, are, uh, they have... Uh, psychosocial uh, uh, I mean uh, problems with them they do not know parents are not comfortable speaking with them uh, or spending time with them so they, there are multiple forms of problems uh, happening to the children and over and above children are being pushed into difficult other tasks like uh, boys are being pushed to work with their uh, in the local communities to sell vegetables or say uh, local ice creams, cakes and biscuits to get some earning for the family. So that is the children are, were not ready to do so. These uh, apart from that, so several other cases has uh, been uh, tackled very tack uh, and very uh, systematically by several organizations like uh, prevention of uh, child marriages. S several child marriage cases has, take has taken place, but a few of the cases could have been uh, prevented uh, by them. Uh, even child trafficking is at high risk because there are a lot of children with their parents coming back home from different other states to their neighboring states. So there are transition and the trafficking uh, rackets, they are uh, roaming around to get uh, connect with uh, get connected with these families and giving them different lucrative offers that they will, they will take uh, just, them to their just, just yeah. one thing. <clears throat> Uh, and just one thing. Mm. There is echo, echo. Uh, mm -hmm. We couldn't hear you properly. Yeah, 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 yeah. so sorry, sorry. It's mm. all right. No, 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 yeah. So that is one kind of vulnerabilities. So families, in fact, the communities and families, both of them are not uh, very aware of how to deal with this situation. They do not know what to do and how to deal with the situation. So I think today's discussion should, uh, I mean, what I, my point of view is, we can focus on uh, listening to all other uh, speakers about how we can involve the parents and the communities in a larger sphere to protect the rights of the children and protect the children from different, um, uh, I mean, dimensions of vulnerabilities in these circumstances of COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. Thank, thank you again. Actually, there is some echo, some uh, network problem mm -hmm. that's going on around the world because users number increasing day by day, especially during this COVID time. So uh, let me come to 
Deborah, uh, a friend song that I mentioned again, uh, uh, she is a renowned development activist, organizer, leader, social worker in Bangladesh. Currently, she's residing here. She is leading WBB Trust, Work for a Better Bangladesh Trust, with a very mute dream. And she's leading Institute of Wellbeing. So, uh, Deborah, could you please share your initial voices with us? How we are thinking about the children during this time? How could they have a sound environment in that sense, out of home even? Right. So my concern about children goes um, outside of coronavirus, outside of this time also, because when we're saying you stay at home and children are having um, physical and mental issues, not being able to go outside and play and behave like children, I know there's a lot of other issues that are specific to coronavirus, but that specific issue of children not being allowed to be children, not being able to lead full lives, is something that preceded the virus, and I'm afraid that it's going to follow it. So part of my issue is how do we look at the problems that we've created, the way we've created these really unhealthy societies, uh, we weaken families, we certainly weaken communities, how do we uh, strengthen those communities and those families so that not just now, but coming out of coronavirus, children can uh, recapture or actually capture the childhood they've never had. So I'll get back to this again later, but issues to me are things like uh, when schools do open, how are children traveling to school? Um, are they prisoners, you know, traveling on the back of a motorbike where they only see their parents back? They have no sense of their surroundings. Are they, you know, are they in a car? Or are they actually able to experience their environment to, to be part of that? And active play, are they allowed to play creatively outdoors? Do they have a place for that? Um, so right now, you know, we say it's unsafe, but we always say it's unsafe for children to play outside because we worry about uh, kidnapping, we worry about traffic, um, pollution is terrible. It's, I think all of us as children grew up getting to play outdoors and we understand instinctively how important that is and we know how important it was for us and yet we are denying children today those opportunities um, right now because of coronavirus, but you know, before coronavirus we had other reasons. So my concern is how do we, not only in this time, um, but how do we continue to change children's lives for the better so that they get to experience their full selves as children? All right, all right, uh, Deborah, for wonderful inception. So let me come to Dr. Roma, actually, this session has a great purpose with you. That is, we are just creating, we are just raising some voices and questions and the situation and the darkness, dark side of coronavirus regarding or impact on the children during this time. And you are here today to just console us how we can keep our children happy during this time. And initially you can share us your voice from Delhi, right? Or your areas where you were working in really. Thank you. Thank you, Habibur, for getting me here on this platform to talk to you. Um, and excellent, uh, the speakers prior to me spoke really well. And uh, a lot of the issues were already discussed. But yet, I would say nobody prepared us for these unusual times, you know. As parents, as children, as adolescents, as adults, uh, we've never seen this kind of time before where we've been confined to our homes and there's social distancing and there's a whole lot of other areas that we really need to take care of. <clears throat> so with that comes more problems where children are seeing it differently and so are the adults also seeing it very differently. Uh, these are very unusual times and I think to shape the future of children now, it's in our hands. Whatever we are going to do now, is going to be the great part for them to be in their growing years. And the children who are going to grow up now, this generation is going to go up really faster than the older gen other generations because they're going to see so many things that the other generations never got to see. Uh, this is also the time where the mistakes what we adults, we parents have done prior to the lockdown while raising our children, I think it's time for us to uh, reinvent and uh, relook into the situations where we can teach some values to our children, involve them 
in our daily life, we get time to spend with them because we were always running from one place to the other. We never thought how important a family unit is. And now what we can see is uh, everybody is trying to connect with each other. Everybody is trying to be with the family. And with the result, I think children are not used to it, and especially the teenagers, because they're looking for a space for their own. And rightly so, they have the right to that space for themselves, but we are unable to give them because everybody seems to be working from home. And uh, we have all kinds of homes, all kinds of cultures where the children are uh, studying from home. Uh, there are many homes where they don't have smartphones, they don't have laptops, and yet they're studying, they're working from home. There are two parents who are doing that, or the child is also doing that. Then there are grandparents who are doing all of that. <coughs> Sorry for my throat. I keep coughing in between. Uh, so, there, you know, children are facing a whole lot of those issues also. And apart from that, the emotional insecurity which has crept into the children, the difficulty that they are having not playing outside, that space which is most important for them, which is very creative for them. So it's time for us to create that space for them within the house and see how we can uh, <coughs> create better spaces for them. And I think while we go on with this conversation, we'd probably be able to uh, talk more about this area. And also, it's time for us to make more adjustments and accommodations and uh, be a little more patient and not be so intolerant because what is happening is there's a lot of child abuse that is happening. A lot of information which is coming up because of child abuse, uh, the emotional abuse within the families, uh, domestic violence which has risen, uh, child sexual abuse which has risen. So we need to really protect our children and also sensitize and create awareness. And I think Habibu, you've created this great platform where we can talk about these issues openly and sensitize parents how to deal with these things and also how we can sit down and play with our children and play small good things with them where we don't need all the equipment to play with them but create spaces within the house to play with them involve them and create values for them so that those are useful for them while in their growing years. There are so many comments. Wonderful discussion initially, actually, Dr. Roma delivered. So we have enough time still to go on in depth and just to create some voices together, how we can take care of our babies, kids, adults, and people uh, very nicely during this pandemic, COVID, that is declared as global pandemic, global human disaster, economic disaster, social disaster, and actually all institutions uh, or marketplaces, all are shut down globally. So our mind is not free nowadays. We cannot free think anything. That is the main reason because we love to speak freely. We love to say things freely. That is the matter, actually. We are hindered. We are uh, compelled not to open our eyes in a sense to see a thing properly. So our children are mostly vulnerable in that case, really. They love to just come to open air, just love to interact with friends, peers, go to school, but which is obstructed nowadays. So uh, let's again come to Mr. Manoj Kumar Sharkar. There are so many rights that you mentioned, really, not in legal term, just uh, uh, in terms of rights that us children are supposed to get, but we are helpless. The parents, in a sense, parents are helpless nowadays. Teachers are helpless because teachers' parents are not uh, caring properly, it's not true. They cannot care properly this time because uh, they are not in such a mode. They are not in such a situation. So how can you please produce some ways of rights and uh, areas that we can look into by other speakers now in that forum today? Mr. Manos Kumar Sharkar. Right. So what I was uh, trying to mention is uh, this is a, a unique situation where children and parents are staying together at home for a long time. This has never happened earlier. So this is one of a unique situation wherein, wherein the parents can be communicated because now uh, access to mobiles and internet is uh, very easy. Almost uh, all uh, families has at least one mobile phone. So 
they can be communicated over phone or maybe they can be connected through uh, community uh, messaging or through home visits which uh, uh, these uh, uh, other organizations are doing they are visiting their houses of the children and taking a note of how children are doing at home how parents are doing at home with the children the most important thing what i uh, agree with dr uh, kumar is like uh, listening to children is very important because parents do not have the habit to listen to the children because most of the time parents uh, usually remain engaged into their uh, professional uh, work or into family work they don't have time to listen to children this could be a good uh, um, situation which can be uh, abs- uh, appropriately used to listen to the children about their uh, issues their uh, any problems if they have then accordingly their right to uh, um, uh, education their right to participation their right to development all these things can be addressed by the parents themselves hello hello yeah i could, I could, so, I could. Uh, yeah yeah okay yeah, okay so the thing is the parents uh, need to understand about the specific rights that the children have majority almost 90% of the parents in uh, india particularly do not have the uh, idea about what are the rights of the children so it is our uh, as 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 social activists as social change makers it is our duty and all other organizations those who are working on the development sector they have the, uh, the duty to make the parents aware that ch- uh, about the rights of the ch- their children and how parents can be a good friend to their children because become a friend is a difficult task in terms of uh, when uh, it's a parent and child relationship so it's very important to become friend listen to the children then automatically they will come to understand about the uh, the uh, issues that are coming up to their children so i still strongly believe that listening is one of the uh, biggest tool which uh, i understand can be used to minimize several other problems so that that is my point of very view good. Yeah, yeah. okay thank you I, i will come back to you again actually there are already so many questions so many issues areas yes. already raised on so let's come to uh, ms shatrupa mozumdar she is practically doing work in that area yes. she is chief functionary of katakali shapnapur on welfare society west bengal so Sh- ms uh, shatrupa mozumdar could you as you have played two roles together three roles actually you are playing teaching t- teachers role you are playing parents role right and and also you are playing a motivated role in yeah. that sense so yeah. how could you share us your practical experiences that actually uh, mr monos kumar sharka raised because uh, he mentioned this time most of the parents in previous time we can claim them they are not aware they are not caring they are not well trained up really and they are not really expert in are uh, caring of the uh, of the children but this time as we are inside of the home inside of the house we are living together all the children parents living together sometimes parents are feel uh, felt disturbed uh, by by the overdoing of the children uh, so many claims from the parents so how could you actually share your experiences from phil level with this forum ms shatrupa mozumdar please Like, is there any pro- oh no she okay okay yeah hello yeah yeah, yeah. you just we'll read it yeah. once i just hand it out out of the network yeah all right dear viewers so what friends, was the question that you- i i'm i'm just sharing you again but i just beg ba- pardon from our followers friends guardians teachers those who are following from home and abroad actually internet connection this time this is a common problem everywhere in the world so please never mind us we are trying to give you some delivery just sharing is caring in that sense this is community talks community leaders platform 
people from all works of life, leaders from all works of life, they're coming, they're invited and they're just delivering, they're sharing their ideas. So nothing to be audit, please don't be, don't be puzzled, don't be bored, just be with us. Uh, let me come again to Mr. Mojunda, Mr. Manos Kumar Sharka. Could you hear me, Shatrupa? Could you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but your question was your voice is yeah, dropping. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just coming. To hear it clearly. Come, I'm coming back. Can to you, you just type out the question in the private chat? Then I can chat. No, then all, I can say it easier. No, no worry. I'm just telling you that that Mr. Manos Kumar Sharka raised some points here that this time parents should be more caring. Actually, we, we the parents, even in mm -hmm. Bangladesh, India, and some other countries, parents are normally not well trained to take care of their children. During this time, during this COVID time, there is so many problems actually arise for the children. So parents should be more caring, more trained up to take care of their babies, children, adults, and but this time, this is a big concern. So as a chief functionary of Shapnupur on Katakali Welfare Society, as you are dealing the children physically, how, how could you? It's a, it's a big question now, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's hear from Deborah. Let's hear from Deborah. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Shatrupa will come back to you again. Now, double, double role she's playing actually due to internet <laughs> connection. So, no worry. Shatrupa, I'm just coming back to you again. Let's talk to Debra. And she is, I know, she is doing a fantastic job in Bangladesh. That is, they are doing a movement of car free, private car free Dhaka city, right? They are doing so many jobs for environment free friendly Dhaka city, environment friendly community, community filled, a necessity of community filled park for the children. How they can divide the time for the children, re roastering, roastering children, Bicycling, so many works actually they are doing uh, for the uh, uh, creating child friendly Dhaka city. So, Debra, could you share us something, please? Before I get to that, I just want to make one point because people were saying this is an unusual time and that children are stuck inside and they've never experienced that. Um, I have met uh, people with disabilities who were stuck inside for 10 years. I heard about somebody who was trans, who was transgender, who was chained, literally chained by his family because they could not accept that their child was transgender. So when we talk about the unusual time and the normal rights children have, um, let's just be sensitive to the fact that even in the best of times, some children are treated worse than prisoners. Um, yeah, <laughs> not sad point. Um, but that's important to me when we talk about, we work on public space in, in Dhaka and we're very concerned that children are able to uh, be outdoors. We see a lot of problems. So the, the playing fields that do exist are dominated by young boys um, and it's very difficult for girls to get out and play. So we see very, very few girl children, even in normal times, who are outdoors actively physically playing. Um, and that's even worse for children with disabilities or anybody who's different. So transgender, gay children, they're having an even more difficult time to um, enjoy outdoor play opportunities. And you know the families are super important, but it's also for children, their community is their peers and they need the opportunity to play with, with other kids and hopefully have adults around to keep things safe, but not necessarily telling kids how to play. Kids should be able to, to make up their own rules um play together so a couple of the things that we're working on that we, we hope to have even stronger um, post covid 19 because one of the things as a public health person we're seeing as air pollution in, in cities where air pollution is worse covid 19 is worse more people get it and more people die of it so we absolutely have to reduce air pollution children have more sensitive lungs so they are more affected by the air pollution so there's a bunch of things that would solve a lot of problems simultaneously. If we had less reliance on motorized vehicles, if kids were walking and cycling to school, then uh, they would travel to school more safely. They wouldn't be creating emissions. They would, it's kind of a play opportunity and a learning opportunity to travel by yourself to school. 
So we have a program in India as well as Bangladesh and some other countries called Active and Safe Routes to School. Part we meaning Healthbridge. Um, we work with uh, WBB locally. Um, and in terms of outdoors play, we often think about parks and playing fields, but we also know many neighborhoods in our cities, and this is true across Indian cities as well as Bangladesh, there are no places to play in many neighborhoods. Um, and as I said, some of the places are dominated by boys or men, so girls and women do not feel comfortable using them. So we do things like um, uh, open street programs where you can uh, take a street, block it from motorized traffic, and open it up for children and others to come out and play. One day I was at one of these programs and there was a woman standing there holding a tiny baby in her arms. And I we talked for about 10 minutes and I realized this is so unusual that someone can stand out in the street in Dhaka and be comfortable and safe and you're not you know, being assaulted by motorized vehicles. So when we don't have space for children to play in our cities, that is a huge failure on our part and we must solve it. And we cannot, unfortunately, just bulldoze shopping malls, I would love to, um, and create more parks. But what we can do is take over some of the streets, take back that public space and make it available for children to play actively. And it's super important now, kids could play outdoors safely with distance if we, uh, didn't allow vehicles on the streets, we would have space. And so, you know, the children who are going insane indoors, they could actually be playing outside. And we need to bring this uh, now and we need to bring it post COVID. So kids being able to walk and cycle outdoors, being able to play outdoors, these should be priorities for us. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Deborah. Many thanks for a wonderful, wonderful summary, actually. I have so many questions, so many questions raised already here from the audience. So let me share you some greetings, some views and the questions that already raised from a different corner of the world. So uh, just share their views. Rajya Mukta, one of our friends just wrote, good evening, sir. Dr. Mithun, uh, hello, Debra. Abhi Enamul Hawk, nice program. Keep keep it off. Saddam Hussain, best wishes to all. Mehrun Labuni, good evening, sir. Fatima Lijia wrote, good evening, sir. Mazharul Islam, he is a renowned social worker actually in Bangladesh. Wrote, uh, good evening, thank you. Jannatul Fedus Tani, Salamu Alaikum. Shem Shing, good evening, sir. Thank you. Most important. Mazharul Islam wrote, most important. Ratul Takma, excellent, sir. Akibur Rahman. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Selena Parvin. Actually, all are greeted, uh, greeting us. So nice, ma'am. Munmun, assalamu alaikum. Mansoor Ali, thank you for such choosing this fabulous topic. Alamin, good afternoon, good, good evening. Hussain Ahmed, there is a question. How we can take care of children during this time if they are sick? Actually, I, I'm just coming, and there are a few more comments and questions. We'll just make a summary on all these things together. Uh, uh, before coming to uh, 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 Dr. Roma, actually, I'm coming to you because Shatarupa most probably she is disconnected. I'm trying to connect and reconnect her again. Amit Rasput from India wrote, as we know, due to COVID-19, families are in OE environment. What steps should be adopted by the parents to provide a depression-free environment to children? Dr. Roma Komar, actually, she he directly wrote to you this, this question. <laughs> And Mansur Ali, uh, his university uh, uh, professor, he wrote, uh, for COVID-19 pandemic, the lockdown strategies on children in low-income countries and communities and expand social protection programs to reach the most vulnerable children. How can we facilitate this? Dr. Roma Komar, actually, this is your turn. I'm coming to you. And Mansur, thank you. And Dr. Shakti from India, good evening, all. Thank you, Dr. Shakti. For being with us. Amit Rasput again wrote, families are in our environment, what steps should be adopted? Actually, this repeated questions. So actually, that is my question also. There are three types of children. We just category them. Normal children, right? Some are disabled children. Some are not disabled in that sense. I, I, we could say special children in that sense, not physically and other parts of disability. So all children this time are vulnerable 
equally parents are vulnerable in that sense during this uh, covid pandemic environment so this is a big crisis dr roma so in terms of psychological corner how could you console us really and console parents like us in that part time is 5 minutes okay <laughs> so <clears throat> so there's a lot of uh, work that needs to be done i think what we haven't done before this is the right time to start doing that work uh firstly let's start communicating with our children we've been talking about it quite often even in this talk that talk to our children we don't need to talk to our children about uh you know why you didn't do this or you are a bad child you are not listening to me you are a mischievous child let's not attack the child let's sit down and have some fun time with the child you know our housework can be done so many other chores can be done but this time is never going to come back the connect the emotional bonding that a parent can begin with the child by connecting and talking and doing many kinds of uh, various uh, activities with the child the child is starting to feel that yes there is a bond there is a family and slowly gradually some values start taking place now uh, we know that uh, you said there are three kinds of children yes in a broad category what about the special needs children the special needs children used to go for their therapy and the parents would get time off them for some time they would get that self care time for themselves also we don't have any of that self care time now we'll have to allocate some time for ourselves to take care of ourselves uh the special needs centers are closed the special therapy centers are closed or even if they open up they'll open up with lots of precautions uh, so we need to train more and more parents on how to do the therapies within their home environments and how we need to empower these parents empower the mother more than anyone else is the mother who's going to deal with all of that because for centuries together it's the mother who needs support so we need to really sensitize and empower this mother when we talk of depression uh let's not get into the word depression because that's a symptom of a bigger problem which is there let's talk of the times when the child is worrying let's address his worries his simple worry when i do workshops for children the simple worry is ma'am if i drink cold water will i get covid those are the kinds of questions that you really need to answer ma'am uh is it possible that i can go and play outside for some time with all the precautions so i wouldn't say no because lockdowns have opened up many places i think with precautions we can do many things let's uh train our children to deal with the social distancing to take care of the hand hygiene and the mask and these three things i think children are far better learners and far more adaptable than the older people you know and children can actually start teaching us many things and during this time their creativity and their uh, inputs you know their inventions have come out in such large degrees that they've started thinking of playing in different manners playing with bottles you know the other day when i was going to the hospital i saw this uh, child who was sitting on the road this is a child of a marginalized community who is sitting on the uh, uh, in the in between the mud with a bottle and just putting stones inside the water and trying to create a rattle out of that it is so innovative we you know those are the things that we need to create those opportunities for children of all age groups of all socio economic background to sensitize them to get them to include children of all areas you know uh the teenagers i think the teenagers need a lot of assistance here because they are so glued onto the screen earlier times we used to keep telling them don't be on the screen there's too much of screening screen time you are doing there's too much of gaming that you're getting into and look at all of us now we're all of us on the screen trying to connect with each other but yet it is time for us to teach our children to create some detox hygiene you know some hygiene which is away from the screen but that can only happen if we parents are first of all ready to detox ourselves we parents should be ready to be away from the screen and sit down and just have fun i grew up in an environment so many years back where there was no screen there was absolutely no screen there was only probably some radio where we could just sit down and listen to radio how many of us read to our children we hardly read to our children 
let's create opportunities for children where they can read let's create more fun time for them even with the the atta that we have in the house you know the flower that we have in the house to create that let's teach them to do their work and let's ask them to count on their blessings these are the times that children have to learn to count on their blessings and also be sensitive to the people who do not have many things you know let's go and help those people who do not have many things and how so how also to take care of dignity of labor these are the things that we need to teach to our children and i don't see that there's going to be depression i see yes there will be questions let's answer those questions let's not run away from answering those questions let's not access the news all the time with the numbers let's not get there let's not see the negatives everywhere let's also focus on the positive times that we are having with our children you know i hope i've been able just, to answer some just, of your questions just just dr roma just one more minute for you we just assign the topic rule of families and communities do teachers of course the part and parcel of community so you love to say any or two points especially for the teachers those who are teaching school or university level or college level class yeah. students i would give a virtual hug to all the teachers because i okay. see that they are now learning so many new techniques to teach our children you know they used to just sit in the classrooms and teach in their face to face method you know here the teachers are working day in and day out to create <clears throat> online classes for the children you know they are training themselves for that so teachers need a lot of commending and they they appreciation because we need to be kind to them they have actually put in a lot of effort in the newer innovative methods in teaching the children <coughs> very good very good there are so many points still coming so let's come to shatarupa mujumdar are you okay could you hear me Yeah I can hear you now. <clears throat> All right. This yeah, is your turn, hello. right? Yeah, yeah. Tell so me. please share your experiences within 4 to 5 minutes. You are practically doing job current situation during this COVID-19. So how people actually children parents facing this crisis in your area that you were doing. What is their real feelings from heart that you could gaze and observe? yes as uh, roma ma'am was mentioning uh, teachers have taken up the situation in a very positive way i must say that um, suddenly they could feel that uh, this was the time that they have a uh, more interaction one to one interaction with the children so when they were taking classes usually there is a class of say uh, 40 students but here instead of uh, we were not having zoom classes so we were having either imo classes which were um, the maximum strength was 6 so the one to one interaction of the teacher and the children was was developing and it was building a very good bond which helped the children to focus even though they were not in school this was one of the positive sides which we have come across while during this period of covid and another one was that the, we found the mothers to be with the children most of the time when the classes were being held and so the mothers here being the first generation the children being the first generation learners in the rural areas where we are working so the mothers were also trying to get the understand the system of the teaching learning process and how they could actually develop their children now we were also conducting facebook live sessions which the videos we were sharing with the parents as a result the mothers many topics were discussed on developing uh, various teaching uh, studies or lessons through activities through art and craft so the mode of uh, mode of teaching learning was being changed instead of the classroom uh, transaction of rote learning or maybe that uh, same lecture method so we were trying to uh, replace that a lot and we have been very successful because the parents have taken it up in a very positive way and the participation has been over 80% of the parents have been participating every day regularly in the classes 
Now, as far as the children with disabilities are concerned, which we had come across during this period, many of them were visited at uh, by the uh, teachers who were on the ground level. At a distance, they would meet these children and talk to them or various games were sent to their houses, which they can do. We have few students who have learning disabilities or autistic, which the mothers at times are very unable to address to their problems. So, you know, we were taking sessions with mothers uh, one to one so that they can handle the children and when the children are little uh, 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 particularly the children like autistic children who find it's a little restless to be at home for long hours how could the mothers involve them in various activities to keep them fresh and to keep them uh, cheerful even with the teachers would interact with these children so uh, on the whole, although this pandemic had uh, really been a very big threat to us because we were uh, completely unaware of such a situation in our lives, but certain um, good, uh, I mean, cha every challenge has certain opportunities also, as we know. So we got a lot of opportunities to interact with the parents with uh, and involve them in the teaching learning process, as I was telling you, the fathers, who have very less time with the children, be it in the urban city or in the rural. So they got a quality time with the children. And they very worked good. very hard. Mm -hmm. And some of the parents, uh, some of the parents uh, who were uh, having a bit of issues among themselves, probably, the mothers would often address to us, telling us that the father is uh, a little reluctant about the child or about the mother and not so caring. So the teachers got a real opportunity to interact with the fathers and tell them in a very positive way that this was a very good opportunity for him to spend quality time with his family and how he could do it very cheerfully. So in, uh, we really came up with two, three cases where it has been a very good success and the fathers have taken it uh, in a very, very positive way. So in a nutshell, I can say that from our point of view, the COVID has been a big learning for us, very big learning. So uh, learning in the sense that a certain situation where we did not know how we could act, but finally we adopted methods of education methods of interaction and uh, so which was positive which was uh, creating a lot of impact in the community very good thank you so, thank you miss chaturopa i'll just come back to you again just let let me come to mr monos sharkar just time is three minutes there is a question and this is also my question uh, mr mansur ali wrote how can we provide practical support to parents and caregivers as a community social worker Mr. Manus Kumar Sharkar, with this point, I have some addition, like in India, in Bangladesh, and some parts of the world, social work, the term social work or worker is not professionalized, is not recognized, is not a responsible post really, because we are doing, we are doing voluntary job, we are doing charity, we're doing some well-being for the people, but this is not really officially recognized. So how could you please explain these are just give us give us your views really how can a social worker can be the part of the society part of the uh, uh, problem sol solving issues and approaches yeah well, first of all i consider that uh, the uh, workers who are going to the uh, communities or the families they are uh, somewhere or other they are also professionals in terms of their technical knowledge their field exposures their uh, experiences so I consider them as development professionals and they are the change makers. Basically, they are reaching out to the end user or the actual families on the ground, which very uh, less people have the access to reach to the families, get to know the families. So in that case, what I was uh, sharing with uh, a few of my uh, junior students there in uh, Vishwabharati Shantini Ketan last week, that while they will be resuming their field work, they'll be resuming their office work uh, in their different organizations. What will they do? Well, what I was asking them to do is to make an uh, assessment of the community of how they have been able to 
cope up with this two months uh, lockdown period because each family has different uh, nature of problem different uh, set of problems so those problems need to be understood by the community uh, uh, social uh, uh, the development professional workers they need to understand the perspective of the families because each family has different set of uh, issues with them they are uh, the number of children is an issue in their families so this kind of thing has to be assessed first and accordingly the caregivers or the parents who are taking care of the children they need to be taken into account because each parent has something to say about themselves and about their children so it's important to hear on uh, from the perspective of the parents and also from the perspective of the children and then bring in a bridge of how they can communicate between themselves i mean the parents and the children they can communicate among themselves in a better way that is more important to strengthen the family bondage and the family relationship at this point of time because this i think covid 19 itself is a problem but otherwise it is also an opportunity to strengthen the family situation and strengthen the family bondage in uh, because uh, um, this situation may not come in uh, next uh, years to uh, in in the future days to go so this is one of the opportunities parents should utilize and as a social worker as a development professionals when we are going back to the communities we should motivate the parents we should talk to the parents and make them understand about the importance of being with the children importance of being with the family members because they are not accustomed to this kind of situation parents the elderly members in the families they are not accustomed so it is important to make them understand and simultaneously also take care of the children of how they are coping up with the situation because it is not uh, the children are not being taken into account they are not being listened to so it is also important to listen to the children we do not uh, many a times we avoid children we don't listen to them we always prefer that we will listen to the adults only so it's very important to listen to the children at the same time while we are listening to the parents then we will find out a solution to each of the uh, uh, specific problems and also as a whole in the community when the community is uh, coming up so we'll have to find out ki how children are staying in a respective community it is important to understand the community perspective because there are communities which are basically dependent on say pidi role or communities engaged into brick field communities engaged into purely on agriculture so those communities are to be taken into account because they have certain perspectives on their own so we'll have to uh, um, first believe that yes the, it, that is their culture and based on that and considering the current situation we'll have to build up some strategies on the ground which I, it is very uh, difficult to say at this moment of time what strategies can be taken up but the point is it's the again is a communication that matters the communicating with the parents communicating with the communities and also the children to understand ki what how best their problem can be listened to and some solutions can be worked out okay hello R- right right i think yeah you are completely all right so mm. actually there are so many issues that you all is de- describing and this is my personal observation as we are the parents we have children at home during this time they are becoming crazy of children really they, they they are not in control always they have more and more demands and new demands coming and the, there are few more observation from so many other colleagues and friends that uh their uh, uh, their children actually uh, are alive during this time they are just changing their toys regularly they are changing their modes of play that dr roma told me actually this is my personal experience at my home that my 6 or 7 uh, six and a half year old boy at 3:30 am when he woke up from sleep he just asked me what should i play about that what should i do <laughs> it's, it's 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 we enjoy this actually the strategy should be that you told uh, debra told and also monas kumar shatrupa everybody is telling like this we have to be much tolerant this time we have to be patient just to uh, listen to them because sharing might be the best option of caring du- during this time because 
when we are not listening to them, they are becoming crazy, right? So let's come to Dr. Roma, and after that, I will come to Devra. So, Roma, your time is just three minutes. Actually, time uh, I'm telling time. Otherwise, it's very tough to control, right? <laughs> you can tell me when to stop. <laughs> <laughs> this time, in some parts of the world, even in India, Bangladesh, and some other countries, there are some residential school for the special child, right? And also the as usual child, the child those are fit. And there are some child hospital as this topic is actually child. So everybody and all the communities, all, all, all the institutions and the residential areas, they have some horror in mind that might be affected anytime. Actually that your student ask you, if I uh, drink cold water, may I be affected right from Corona? So do you have any message for those who are not able to come back to home, right? Just they are confined in that place due to uh, official restrictions. One thing, another is we are just uh, uh, speaking on the children, those who are already in care of at home, well of families, but those, the children, there are many children, they are passing their nights, days at, at the streets, rail stations, right? Bus stands, and there are so many out shelters, they are passing their time. They are just need a foot, rather care, rather mental stress, mental caring. Mm -hmm. So uh, do we have some other suggestions for those children even? Yes, any, 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 any? Sure. So this is the state which is very troublesome. You know, this is the state where all of us are feeling very, very distressed because there's so many of the children who are living on the streets, not knowing what to do, not having enough food for themselves, not understanding where the heat is or where the rain is and what to do with this COVID. And a lot of the migrant laborers in India, you all must have seen that how they are going back to their homes because they just don't, they can't afford to stay in the city. And they're going with their families. They're walking for miles and miles together and uh, they just going there it's very sad it's it's hard uh, you know your heart is uh, very troubled when you see them and what must be happening to these children in their minds in their growing years this is the impact that is going to stay with them forever this is not going to be going away from their memories and all experiences are going to come in from this impact and how they've been able to come out of this impact with that emotional fortitude or the emotional resilience that they've had you know and are we really as a community as a country as uh, parents actually you know raising our children with uh, emotional fortitude and resilience i'm not sure because we seem to be protecting our children way too much and uh, we don't allow them to make any mistakes and if they do make mistakes we are there to just defend and just take care of them but we don't allow them to see failure we don't allow them to see disappointment now that is something that we need to teach our children and for your specific question for the children who are away from their families yes it is tough for them uh, they some of the children do not even have the internet facility to be connected with their families you know they're staying very far away from uh, certain places they don't have that wi-fi connect so they have to go some kilometers to even connect to their family and, uh, and this is the time where the family needs to have that emotional contact with the child and so is the child also with the family or anyone with whom uh, the child is uh, you know uh, connected with that could be an extended family that could be a colleague that could be a teacher I, I think this is a time that we need to have this kindness towards children who are going through this difficulty and uh, that's what I said in my earlier chat that, uh, you know, it's time that we teach our children to be kind to each other, to have gratitude and appreciate each other and not just look at the negatives, you know. Let me do something for the community. Let me do something for the society. And a lot of children are coming forward with their innovative ideas to work with those children, to help these children. And uh, I agree with uh, Deborah when she said that let's create spaces for them without the 
traffic there and let them play let them play with social distancing and let's create that space for them let's all work as a community to help these children uh, you know develop that resilience so that they can bounce back and and learn many more new skills learn many more uh, methods to deal with this uh, covid and also uh become a little more uh, you know have emotional hygiene for themselves and if there is a problem let's create uh, helplines let's create some support groups for children of various communities so they can get their problems addressed so that uh, parents can even go there and talk and the children are allowed freely to come and talk so that there's nobody judging them or so nobody is uh, saying anything to them but there's if they are vulnerable let's go and protect them because this is the future generation and what we are doing right now is the one that is going to be seen in the next few years so let them ape the best from us and let's create that opportunity for them that's what my message is just one one more question just for one or two minutes dr roma there is a question how can children of school be trained up or socialized staying at home during coronavirus but my specific focus on adults and actually they are a bit uh, a bit crazy they don't love to listen to someone else they are uh, loving and they are in a uh, sense of do what they love to do really so during this time they are much uh, um, more vulnerable in that sense because they are not in freedom of choice freedom of talk freedom of movement so is there any specific suggestions for the school goers children i would say as teenagers uh, you know when we were also teenagers we would do things which were inappropriate we have been experimenting we have been exploring and during these unusual times our children will also do that let's not be cops on them all the time let's also give them some privacy for themselves but in the same time let's sit down with them and spend more time with them just not doing anything but maybe you can just take permission from your children that can i just sit in your room i am feeling like just sitting in your room you can continue to do your work but i'll do my own work i just like this space so you have to make uh, situations or you have to create those situations where you can connect with your children and i don't see that children uh, can actually misbehave without any provocation i don't see that as a mental health person uh i think as parents we are very often provoking our children we are attacking our children or we are only focusing on their uh, uh you know weaknesses or some things that they don't do and we do not like to focus on their strengths so it's time that we start addressing and seeing children on their strengths every child has a strength let's focus there let's ask for assistance from them let's share our uh, feelings let's share our daily work with them and then only the child will start communicating the communication does not happen in adolescence the communication happens from the time the child is small so you begin doing that and not wait ki my child is going to now become big and now he's understanding so now i will do many things it's not like that you know that's when the problems arise because the child has uh, ha- got habituated to the fact nobody is going to ask them any questions or nobody is going to do anything you know so it's time that we spend more time and have more activities with children you know and you can create activities within the house you can keep your furniture in one side and you can play hopscotch with them you can play uh, you know uh, games like yoga where you're putting a toy on the the side of your feet and just pick up the toys the soft toys with your feet and just throw it back you know this you're you're creating so many activities for children you can uh, the, the what works the lot is growing some seeds in the house seeing that uh, nurturing a, a sapling that is very good for the child nurturing through uh, maybe pets pet therapy is very well known and that's how children become they understand the softer emotions also and there's many uh-huh. things that you can do all right dr roma i will come back to you again with the issue of furniture because many many of our women i mean the they, they love to bring more furniture there is no space for the children at home right <laughs> so lastly actually after moving a long way i i just come in to the uh, debra fensom right long time there is no floor. I, i was just waiting to come to you 
there is a big issue that is community issue that you are dealing so far we know my question is and there are so many uh, opinions are here in a community community like dhaka this is close example here we are thinking for the park we are thinking for the playground we are thinking for a open space for the children but matter is in the same community there are some rich class people living some uh, slum area people a uh, low, lower class i mean low uh, income uh, livable people are living but that same play playground actually is needed for all the children because child minds are same in a sense child are seeking all children are seeking similarly the same facilities in childhood so here in dhaka city you are doing really so many good works for the children for a livable community a uh, uh, pollution free community environment friendly uh, community so beside parents parents is the part of community but there are so many other people of the community to come together and play for this so how you are thinking to create a better community in dhaka city debra please um five, 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 five minutes me. time no worry five yeah. minutes time you can go on uh, okay <laughs> so We've heard from Dr. Roma Kumar and others about the children who are living in the streets, uh, children who are, you know, small children who are working for a living. Um, this poverty, which we might think is a major issue only in our countries here in Bangladesh and in India, but having grown up in the United States, I'm aware that a lot of children and families are homeless in the United States. There are um, something like one in six pe people regularly are going hungry, um, and if you're if you're black it's something like 9 in 10 children have gone hungry during their childhood so these issues of poverty and not providing sufficiently for our children they're worse here but they are also issues in very wealthy countries and that leads me to a question of the solution to all of this and if we think that you know the solution to coronavirus we're going to have a vaccine we're going to have a cure the solution to poverty is economic development economic growth and then everything will be fine I think we need to to step back and ask if that's actually realistic. And I think we need to talk about what our values are. And it's very clear always, but especially in in troubled times that our values um inside our deep inside values don't necessarily align with what the way that we're living our lives on a day-to-day -day basis and the values being shown by our politicians. So I think for all of us we care about people we care about the environment we want children to grow up playing outdoors um drinking clean water uh, having clean air to breathe and that's not a reality for many of us uh we want everyone to have a decent home and enough food and that is not a reality not just in poor countries but even in rich countries um or you see India and Bangladesh going through major economic growth and yet we cannot seem to uh address poverty so i think when we look at how we tend to think about society and our roles as individuals and for many families the goal for your child is that your child excels and your child is the best in the class and then will become um able to get a great corporate job and earn a lot of money and that that the money the the materialism being a consumer what can i buy how fancy in a home do i have a big car those become our values and that's what i would call a symptom of a sick society when our values become material objects over things that truly matter like having clean air having clean water having time for our families and now that we do have time for our families and we discover we don't know how to how to be with our families how how sick are we as a society that we have to discuss how do you spend time with your children how do you play with your children because we haven't had that time we've spent hours a day stuck in congestion we've spent hours a day working to buy these material things which aren't meaningful and now that we're sitting at home with our families like oh my goodness i've never done this so i think for some kids they are very happy they're finally getting to see their family spend time with their family some families are managing better but the fact that so many families are in crisis because we don't know how to spend time with people we have created societies where uh i mean certainly strangers strangers are scary stranger danger we don't trust strangers but then even in our homes we don't even know how to relate to our own family members that is truly when you those are symptoms of a sick society so 
can we move beyond this obsession with competition and focus more on cooperation? Can we rebuild the community that's been torn apart um, because we're so busy uh, commuting and fighting to earn more money and to be better than others that we've forgotten that our neighbors, uh, the people living around us, they are our community and we should know them and their successes are our successes. It's not them versus us, it's us doing well together. How do we relearn to value all people? So not just people who look like us, who have the same religion or in the same income group or who like us, you know, maybe straight, um, non-transgender, no disability. Those are, anyone like us is valuable and other people are not. So I've certainly seen this playing out in the United States with the, um, George Floyd. We have so many issues of, of separating us from each other, not being able to build community because we're afraid of the other. We don't value people who are different. And that allows the people who want to keep us apart to prevent us from prevent building something better. It allows them to, to keep us separated. So I think we need to come back to our shared mission. Who are we as people? What is important to us? Do we really value family and community? And if so, we need to start acting like that. Do we value the environment that allows us to be healthy? Then we need to start acting like that. So are we predominantly consumers? We're consuming on our phones, we're consuming you know, lots of material objects, or do we wish to truly be people, members of a family, and that family extends beyond our, our home and our immediate relatives to the people living in our same community, in our same city, sharing this planet of ours and if we did reclaim those values we would be much better able to face things like coronavirus to face the climate crisis to face all of these crises that are affecting us and it comes back to me about public space and you know you talk about rich people and poor people and you know i can't play there because those kids are dark or dirty and you know un uneducated I need to keep my kids where only wealthy kids are because they'll learn bad things from those dirty children. You now, all of these crazy things that we, we, we separate each, ourselves from others. And to me, the beauty of public space, whether it's a, a park or a, a street where you've closed off uh, vehicle traffic and there's people cycling and walking and playing and dancing and you know maybe having a street festival, Different people come together and learn about each other, and we remember that what truly matters is not how much money we have, how big our home is, how many cars we have. What matters is a healthy, strong community where people look out for each other. And every crisis that people go through, um, certainly when there's a natural disaster, these days climate-related disasters generally, but that's when people, again, are helping each other, and you see the strength of community and coronavirus is another disaster. We're going to have a bunch more disasters. You know, we're having cyclones. We're going to have, we're having drought. We're having all kinds of problems. We can't solve these problems alone. So when we see that we can't even connect to our own families, we can't connect to others in the community, we've forgotten our true value of, of people in the environment. Now that we have some time to reflect, we're not spending hours a day at commuting. Let's reflect again on our values and how we can work to to build back better, to create a society that does reflect our values. So we're not just helping enrich the giant corporations. We're not continuing to trash our environment. We're not continuing to isolate from, from others, but we're actually working together to create something that, that does reflect who we are as people and our desire for all people to flourish. When I say flourish and prosper, I mean not in terms of how much money they have, but do they have the basic needs and do they have the happiness that comes from being part of a vibrant community where you know and care about those around you and everybody has a place within society. So I hope that we, learning from coronavirus, we will build back better and return to those core values that they're deep inside, but we maybe put them down too deeply. Very That's good. Debra, 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 from some just one question, there is a question from Prakriti Basu. How can we instill all the lost values? As you were discussing values, this is yes. the time when the 
service holder parents right the parents are in job or business they are at home currently this is the high time to just upgrade values among their children because they are passing time together and we know family is the ancient and then the of course the prior organizations or institutions to input values among the children so uh, uh, actually this is the question you will get time again to speak on that if you love to speak so we are coming actually coming close to the end our time is one hour and 30 minutes actually it's very tough to close on that if the viewers the audience friends followers those who are already watching please share it more so that so many people will be connected and if you have any more questions just write it right now let's come to shatrupa as you are teaching students you are teaching shatrupa you are teaching students you are working with education project and dealing with parents and students together during this uh, so internet problem so far so don't waste time let's come to uh, mr monos kumar sharka actually this time students staying at home they are in a tough time they are in a dilemma online classes is going on they are waiting for the exams. Some somebody are waiting for results. Parents are waiting for good results. Even there is COVID nineteen, it doesn't matter. They love to get their children engaged with the study at home. So we are we are just discussing, and there are so many challenge channels discussing this issue. But parents love to see their children brilliant scoring, not values sometimes, right? Brilliant values. So. How could you actually not suggest share your ideas for the parents? Because there is a question from uh, Chandrima Sharkar. Actually, this question uh, she asked to Dr. Rama. I will come to you again. But Monas Kumar, how could you uh, elaborate within two minutes? Time is two minutes, please. We are just uh, uh, coming down to the time. Unmute, please. Unmute your mic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, the thing is, uh, so far as the online uh, education is concerned uh, in India, uh, a recent study I was just going through, only 10%, around 10% children in India has uh, access to uh, online education system. And that's quite pathetic, like 90% uh, children are facing a digital distancing apart from social distancing. So there are two barriers coming up. One is a social distancing, another one is a digital distancing. So these two things are uh, simultaneously managing these two things is not a very easy task for the parents. Many a, a times parents are facing a lot of difficulties in addressing the this issue. The children want uh, internet connection, they want a smartphone or a television because there are classes being held in television and also on smartphones. And there are parents, quite a lot of parents, what I was just mentioning, 90% of the parents do not have access to smartphones or even if they have smartphones, they don't have the money to spend on internet connections. See, in these circumstances, it is a, quite a difficult situation for the parents to um, support their children. But nevertheless, uh, there are hopes uh, and when there are a lot of children which uh, this question is asking about. There are a lot of situations when children's exams have been uh, withheld because of this lockdown situation. Children are also in a uncertainty about whether these exams will be held or not. There are a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, miscommunications going on. There are a lot of uh, WhatsApp posts and Facebook posts going on. So people are, uh, parents and the children both are confused about uh, this. Uh, exams which have been uh, postponed due to this lockdown in these circumstances what i understand parents should be uh, more careful about uh, taking care of the children the children should not lose their hopes that is very important to uh, note uh, as uh, dr uh, roma ma'am was referring that it is important to take care of the children and also for the adolescents it is important to give them some space to spend by their own it is not that you are doing a policing on them you should not do a policing on them but keep on watch that they should not go search into such uh, web pages or sites which are vulnerable to them 
but also give them some time so that they can listen to good musics or watch some good movies also that will enhance or that just give them some uh, ventilation uh, for the time being uh, to overcome this kind of uh, situation when they have no contacts with their friends only through phones or those who have smartphones they can con connect over whatsapp or some other uh, modes of video call so in this situation it is very really important to balance two things one is giving time to the children and also allowing them to spend their time of their own because if you are always policing on them they will be afraid and they will try to hide something which is not expected at this point of time when you uh, both parents and children spending almost the entire day at home so it's better that you create a very comfortable and very uh, suitable environment at the uh, home when you both parents and students can stay together in a very uh, uh, conducive environment share each other talk to each other listen to each other and help each other in each of your uh, work uh from my experience i can tell you what i do my son is uh, 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 uh is studying in class 11 what i do is i allow him to help me in my work in terms of uh, doing some uh, computer designing and all this thing that he enjoys and if i if i uh, don't allow him or if i don't uh, listen to him he will be disappointed so what i have done is i have allowed him to do uh, some uh, designing for me some uh, activities uh, and the computer based activities for me this is how i'm involving him into my own work and that is how he is also getting close to the uh, situation and uh, has a close uh, interaction with me and my wife so this can be an uh, option for other parents to follow also right so yeah, yeah, is, right. yeah. Huh. Okay. thank you very good actually last last two minutes um last two minutes i'm coming to dr roma there was a question during this time we you know covid 19 has given us so many puzzles problems uh, 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 adverse situation and so many other hazards really during this time but how can we make this as opportunity especially for the children that uh, partially uh, manas kumar mentioned uh, because dur during this time when our children love to do anything with the parents most of the cases as we are even obstructed at home we feel disturbed so how can we engage them in online platform as an opportunity to train up them just few of the skills i mean the positive side of covid that we, 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 we may bring for our children so as a mental health person and as a child advocate i see can't hear me yeah yeah you uh, yeah yeah you we can yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah yeah okay so as a mental health person as an uh, and as a child advocate what i see is that uh, you know children are very very adaptable i don't see children not being adaptable so uh, the opportunities that need to be created are from our side from the adults who are there and i think we became parents without realizing that we need to actually spend time with our children you know it, there's nobody else who can actually spend that time with our children except us the values that we can teach is just us so it's time that we i i see this as a very positive time i do not see it as a very negative time there have been times that all of us thought that i wish we had a little more time i wish we had more time so that we could sit at home and do so many things i wish i had more time that i could spend and play some time with my child that time is here and now it's not going to come back again make the best use of this time so that in the future children know that my parent was there when i needed them i learned so many things when i needed them use them in the household chores let them learn new skills so many children are picking up new skills of cooking so many children are picking up new skills of baking on the internet platform they can learn some skills uh, they can do zumba online 
they can do yoga online i know so many children who are learning uh, dancing online which is kuchipudi dancing or bharatnatyam they are learning it all online they are learning new uh, uh, new language online uh, there are it's not just games that you can do i think there's a lot of reading that you can do it's a lot of cognitive training that is taking place while the internet is there it's not and as a parent you need to create that platform for the child you need to spend that time with the child and not only focus on what he or she is not doing this is the time that they will make online friends let them except look at the fact that they don't get into trouble we all know of this uh, instagram post that went viral you know we are all aware of that why is this happening because we as parents are not training and sensitizing our children on the sexuality aspects it is time we teach them all these things it is time we spend time with them it's time that we sit down and just have just fun i mean these are simple things like playing uno with them simple things like playing uh, games by uh, by uh, you know coloring uh, doing so many new things and do the uh, diy activities do it yourself activities which the youtube is full of let's all sit down and do that and we became parents because we wanted to become parents then why are we running away from that responsibility we were actually thinking waiting for what i don't know this is the time this time is not going to come back let's all work together and let's keep our children happy if our children are happy i am happy if i am happy my child is happy so let's not look because this is not there i am not happy no it doesn't work even if i have very little i can still be very happy and that's what my child needs to learn this is the time that you know no you know don't create too many rules for the child let them dirty the house sometimes let them play around it's all right we'll clean it up together we'll learn to clean it up these are skills that children will learn so let's just have fun great wonderful discussion really we have many things to learn from this forum so for i could guess because wonderfully you have described monoskema sharka described debra and shatrupa majumdar actually uh, i feel sorry for her because of uh, poor internet connections it's it's happened here some parts of bangladesh few days before there was ampan bangladesh and some mm -hmm. parts of india you know and sundarbon area she is living in west bengal and uh, very close to sundarbon area actually she is suffering from that she told me earlier so uh, let's come to debra actually this is last two minutes for you uh, how could we dream for a better community better society because we want we desire and expect always to uh, live in a better family better community neighbor will, will be fantastic but i personally don't love to be fantastic man a good soul man so how could i expect to see a better community what is your thinking and dream to see a nice community in dhaka um why would start by saying come, come to I, you I just one minute uh, we need to spend where we can less time with these with our phone yeah, this, uh, this, this is your time. this is your last two minutes yeah, and one laptop. minute okay last step yeah yeah so <laughs> you know we're starting to now and i'm doing it myself but <laughs> people are 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 key and you know we can we can stand 6 feet apart and talk to each other and i go out every day with my dog three times a day and there's kids roaming around and we're having interactions and i sometimes just stand and look out my window right. and look at people i'm so obsessed now i want to be able to see people and interact with them so building our cities that that is part of our regular life you know we need to read books we need to talk to each other about true ideas our values what what city what uh, life do we want for our our children for our families and as i just keep saying you know open up public spaces so that we can be outdoors and interacting we can we have lots of space in our cities and on the streets if we just get rid of the vehicles certainly during covid there's fewer vehicles let's take over those streets have outdoor parties and six feet apart and we can actually interact and people can play and adults can talk to each other and as we learn about the people around us let's just remember what's truly important is it's people and it's the environment the physical environment that sustains us 
and let's invest our time and energy in giving back, giving back to our communities, giving back to people and, and try to be less concerned about being uh, consumers and more concerned about being true people, true members of our society. Great, fantastic. Last minute, Shatrupa Majumdar, could you hear me? Shatrupa, could you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you just repeat the question once? Yeah, actually, question and time is over. No worry for that. If possible, again, we will invite you to share your views today. Already you have said uh, uh, so many, you, you have given us so many ideas. But this is last minute, actually, we are running after time. So could you, could you just say us something, how we could be happy or stay happy, stay happy, healthy at home during COVID-19? What is your suggestions in a few minutes? Oh, uh, sorry, few, few, few points within a minute. Okay. <laughs> uh, to be happy under such circumstances of challenges, I feel that um, the member, the family members need to be very cheerful, whatever the circumstance may be. It's very difficult. It's not easy, but uh, they have to find happiness in the little things that they do at home with, along with the children. So uh, it can be just, uh, uh, I mean, the mother is cooking and the children are helping the mother or. Uh, she is again disconnected. <laughs> so it, 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 it's all right. Actually, we are running after time. So hope to see her again. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Manas Kumar Sharkar, this is last minute talk, right? This is last mm. minute for this episode, for this show, for, for our viewers. What you will have to share? This is the last minute. <laughs> so last minute what, 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 what came to my mind after uh, listening to all other uh, speakers and uh, listening to the other questions and all, what we can do together, uh, like we can mm, build a platform of creating a communities, a child-friendly communities, that should be our priority at this point of time because children uh, should be the um, priority attention at this point of time. And we together uh, with the parents, with the communities, can build communities uh, as, uh, I can uh, quote it, child-friendly communities. So it is, it is very important because keeping child right. safe, keeping mm -hmm. child uh, uh, in their, uh, help them grow in their own way giving them a uh, window to grow and excel with their uh, inner talents, inner capabilities. It, it is very important which parents and communities should learn and guide together. It's, it's a collect, it should be a collective effort which we together can do. And I think we as uh, the four speakers are here, we together can create a platform uh, where we can, from where we can uh, provide some support to the communities, to the parents who are interested to uh, take uh, help of us in very good, coping very up good, with very good. So that is my Thank suggestion, you. and uh, that, that could be uh, one way out. Uh, let's hear from others. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Shatarupa, could you hear me? This is the last chance, last 30 seconds to say hello. <laughs> hello to everybody. Okay. <laughs> last 30 seconds. Could you? Can you please say hello to everybody? Yeah, hi, hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay. Hello. you're audible. You're audible, yes. Yes, yes. So, uh, as we were discussing, yes, of course, uh, you know, we have to envisage uh, certain designs, certain ways where we can uh, create. Uh, <coughs> A good space for all children, for all children, taking into Very consideration good. children living in the urban areas as well as rural areas. Thank you. Thank you, Shatarupa Mojumda. Debra, just 30 seconds, right? Just to say last point, last last word that for the audience, friends, and for us. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to say it over and over again. Let's stop being so materialistic. <laughs> Let's be much more people oriented. Uh, it's going to be better for our environment. 
we can't go back to the same levels of pollution we had before coronavirus. Uh, we, we need to spend more time with people doing valuable things, which doesn't mean buying, actually spending time in, in healthy ways. More trees, more clean air, more clean water will all benefit from that. Control the corporations and let the people uh, take over. <laughs> let us have, have our lives back and our healthy lives that we, you know, have some people will never experience. So let's, let's how, how do we allow children to be children and to experience an actual healthy, nourishing environment where the people around you are not scary strangers, they're friends, they're people who are helping you. We can rec recreate that environment, but we have to control the corporations and regain our power as people. Sure. Very good. Thank you. Uh, before coming to last minute's talk to Dr. Roma, there are a few more questions and friends from Nigeria, from Japan so far. Actually, uh, they are watching this with just greeting. So last minute talk from uh, uh, Dr. Roma, please. We are we are just close to end, right? After you talk, I will speak two or three words, then I will com complete today. So all of us actually said some really nice points. And uh, I think as adults, as professionals, we've given all the inputs that is possible. But I think we need to come out with some policy making. And it's up to us how we can create those little policies and not just depend on the government to do that. Uh, and create small spaces for children, create more uh, parenting workshops for parents, uh, get our children to see what it means to have no, uh, no ceiling on their head, get children to see what they do not have. And also it is time that we start living minimalistically and not keep holding stuff because we realized in the last three months that we didn't need so much that we kept here. And we could do everything to make food in the house. We didn't have to buy so much of uh, different kinds of foods from the market. I think children are realizing and children are learning far better than all of us. And let's just accept our children the way they are. Let's love them. Let's nurture them. Uh, let's create values for them. And let's just be happy and kind and appreciate each other. Gratitude. Excellent talk, actually, uh, dear viewers, dear friends. Last of all, at the last last point, I would like to convey my gratitude to Almighty. Of course, sincere regards to a, a daily. I'm telling that is uh, Polish force, defense people, right? Government officials of different countries, health health professionals, doctors, nurses, uh, development or uh, uh, development activists in different countries, and of course, the low earners. People, those who are selling goods, supporting us with uh, daily, daily chores and daily activities. And my greetings to all yeah, of our friends, those who are watching this one and a half hour, 40 minutes together. My special thanks, of course, of course, to the honorable uh, speakers today who has given me approximately two hours today. Though this is uh, it's a big area, really, child issue. It's a big issue, but it's very difficult to we just point out some uh, some uh, areas of uh, child issues just to how to be uh, uh, happy, how to keep stay at home, how they sound this time. And I'd like to tell you, this is a Community Talks BD, Community Talks platform. As a social worker, I thought this is my responsibility to share some voices with the people. I'm not sure how much they might be, uh, 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 it might be effective for the people, but I do believe firmly from my heart, uh, this is a chance just to create some voices for the society to see a better community. And when we are coming together, we are sharing our voices. I think in a sense, this is means of caring. And in a family, we always, or sometimes we forget to take decision from the children. We think me and my wife or my wife and me, or my father and mother, the elder people or, or elderly, they are the decision maker. Please don't forget the children. They have some rights to speak with you. They have some rights to share with you. Sharing is caring and community talks. Uh, this is the platform. Uh, this is the platform just to share and care. We are ready for that. We are just holding this episode. Today, after today, I mean, the after tomorrow on 7th, 7th of June, there is another episode that would be held on community rebuilding in post-COVID era, a global social work concern. Speaker from uh, Mumbai Tata Institute of Social Science, Dr. Murli Deshai, 
uh, immediate past president of IFSW, that is the International Federation of Social Worker, Ruth Starr from United Kingdom, and Professor MD Abul Hussain, uh, Hussain former uh, chairman, Department of Social Work, Jagannath University of Dhaka. They will present after tomorrow. So hopefully you will join us and of course, put your nice comments to uh, make significant that uh, uh, the session day after tomorrow. Thank you. I would like to lastly see my, uh, 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 see my speaker space today. I'm very grateful to you and very happy to see your delighted face, wonderful discussion. Uh, uh, exception uh, uh, to a little bit uh, disruption of uh, Shatrupa's network connections. Please never mind. Actually, this is current scenarios going on everywhere in the world. So, Shatrupa, many thanks to you. Debra, very delighted to see you here. Manos Kumar Sharka, thanks goes to you, of course. Uh, 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 Dr. Rama, for all of your wonderful time with me. Thanks a lot. Good night, everybody. Hope to see you again in Good the next night. episode. Thank you. Good, Good night. night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.